Welcome to We Are Libertarians Daily. I am one host named Dale Melchin, and with me is Hody Johns. How are you doing, bud? I am two host. Hody Johns, I'm doing... <laughs> I'm doing good, man. The uh, my I've uploaded correctly today, and I'm feeling nice and charged. Uh, we got we got two. the The Facebook folks are going to see both shows at the same time. It's a double header. A double header. But yeah, if you're listening to the uh, on your regular podcast feed, we just got a couple shows. We're just recording them in the same day, but you'll hear them. Uh, you'll hear them separately. So, yes. uh, Dale, we're going to start with your show, and I'll let you give the introduction on it. Uh, we are talking about single-minded focus, um, and the reason why we're talking about that today is because I am taking a hiatus from Wall. I'm going to go ahead and announce that now, a small hiatus from Wall Daily. Um, I don't know for how long. Um, I may be back intermittently. Don't know if I should have announced that here, but I'm doing it anyway. But um, to focus on other things, I need to be single-minded in my focus on my day job and build up more clients in the painting business so that is that is that and um i already hate single-mindedness because why? you are a great friend and i enjoy these shows and so now you're saying that that is the reason that is the reason that i don't get to spend the time with you that i wanted and so uh i just don't think about it as positively as you so now that you've made it look terrible go ahead and make single-mindedness sound great well, first of all, remember we still have Messenger, and we still ha we can still Zoom, even though we're not recording it, unless you just decide to record without my consent, which in there'd be some kind of interstate crime, hashtag politics. But it, in the broad arc of things, we we have many things that we have to attend to in life. We have to attend to our health. We have to attend to finances. We have to attend to um, you know intellectual growth, spiritual growth, whatever. But um, oftentimes those things can serve as distractions. Now tying this back into the whole fasting from video games thing, basically what I'm talking about is if you're trying to achieve a really, really huge goal, which in my case is rebooting the, uh, re rebooting my local entrepreneurial efforts, you have to put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it. So basically what you're doing is you're taking from different areas that have been distractions. In other words, for me, gaming, I don't play as much as I used to. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, doing other, other distracting things. And even, I've even had to cannibalize, um, some church time and some fitness time to, to accomplish what I need to accomplish this week. But basically you're just taking the different things of your life, reallocating them into a single goal. In this case, it's, in my case, it's rebooting a painting business and it, it could be something completely different in your case. It could be, it could be a fitness goal. It could be. Oh, I'm a new libertarian and I need to learn all of the things. So I'm going to do that. Not very wise. I would still recommend going to your day job while you're learning your libertarianism, but that's one way to do it. And the, the big advantage of it is you, you get more as you put the resources into that single goal, you'll accomplish it faster, especially if it's a big one, instead of being all over the board with all of these different things. And that's unfortunately why I've got to um, depart from um from wall daily for a while i'll still be contributing memes and other things in the background but yeah um i'm trying to think of the big benefits basically it just you don't have to it, it as opposed to being scattered in a bunch of different directions it gives you one thing to focus on that you can eventually once you build up to that you can maybe redirect it in those other things but it's basically bending your time your mind into a single goal you're basically applying a hammer. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. You're basically applying a sledgehammer to a pinhole to burst open and and get to that uh, burst open the wall and get to that goal that you're going after. So there, yeah, that's that's what I got for yeah. it. So what are you? Well, why I'm don't be... you? Why don't you like it? Why do you? You can counterpoint me if you want. Oh no, I think single mindedness is good. I'm just I'm just jabbing you. I might have to make a Dale puppet and then just keep doing this. And it'll be like, I, I do not consent. <laughs> well, it's intellectual property. You don't own your trademark in my ANCAP world. So I'm sorry the the, the ownership of your likeness is, is for all. No, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, don't we believe in self-ownership? You can't have my Sel likeness. Self-ownership, own... but uh, that's an intellectual property issue. I can, I can copy your face and put it wherever I want. 
there are like trademark laws. In fact, a lot of libertarians think that's like the, one of the only things that the government should enforce. That's a totally different. That's a totally different thing. You just want to do politics no, on my last two episodes. No, I don't. Single mindedness. Look, big here, liar. Here's the deal. And and some people say, well, I'm really good at doing two things at the same time. Like uh, a, a lot of people can, or I shouldn't say a lot. There are a fraction of people who can juggle with one hand, who can take three balls and juggle them. Normally, those type of people though can juggle like ten balls if they use both their hands. So mm -hmm. really, it's it's a matter of saying, hey, I'm going to put all of my focus into this one thing and just do it really well. I am the most obvious person on earth when I'm trying to text or be on my phone and talk to somebody at the same time. I'm really bad at it. And so I'm probably a clinical example of why you shouldn't split your focus why you should be of, of a single mind when you're accomplishing something. Now, I know the second part that we're going to talk about is hitting our goals, but I just want to start with the first part, which is just staying in that single zone. The quality of your work will increase. It mm -hmm. has to. The, your distractions will decrease. And you just say, this is my zone. I think a lot of this has to do with time management and saying that I, am, I have dedicated this time to doing this one thing. One, one thing that I really want to distress... I've talked about it with you before, but even in your leisure, you should be single mindedness to, you know, exercise single mindedness to say, I am playing video games right now and not and doing nothing else. I don't want distractions. I don't want outside whatever. I don't want to maybe have to run out the door or interrupt to cook dinner because here's the thing, the way your brain relaxes, if you're going to say, hey, I'm playing video games for the next X amount of time, budget your time. Say, this is when it starts, this is when it's over, and I'm not going to do anything else. Because if you never fully unwind, you're never invested in it. And so your brain is never going to actually relax because it's just going to say, well, this is what I'm doing in between work sessions. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even like being on Facebook during my relaxing time, unless I've said this is my re relaxing time for Facebook. You know, right. and then and then that's time and that's fine. You know, one of the things that I noted when we read our first book for the book club, um, uh, them was he was talking about some of the harmful effects of social media. And you just need to say this is he what he does is he's not off of social media. Right. He's a U.S. senator, by the way. Super important guy. Mm -hmm. He's not off of social media. He just says, you know what? I I eat family dinner and I'm at family dinner. When I'm at Congress, I'm at Congress. And then at the end right. of the night, I take, I have, you know, a half an hour of time. And I said, this is my social media time. And so it actually increases your social media interaction as well. Because you can, if you do a hundred social media posts a day, but you're all kind of distracted on all of them. Mm -hmm. Versus one that you can put the love and effort into that goes viral. I mean, obviously that's better right versus saying well he posts a lot is no substitute for saying he posts you know intermittently but it's very but it's a good post you know it's something that we want to see um right and so really i mean that's that's the result of the effects but there's no measure for how much that helps your brain to be able to focus on that one thing and now it's my turn to talk for four minutes straight so there you go dale back to you <laughs> well uh i was already breaking the single-mindedness rule while you were talking there but i think i think you're absolutely right you need to be single-minded in in leisure and whatever it is that you're doing it's almost like it's almost like going through a a particular um a particular type of cycle because if you don't or like rebooting a computer because if you don't do the um do the recreation properly which that's going to be a challenge because for me at least going forward because i'm going to be working 12 or more hours a day um whether i'm working for my main client or i'm acquiring others it's gonna to be tough to get that recreation in and you have to really focus on it and not think about the other things and put your not just your physical energy into it but your mental energy you have to be continually vigilant of those arising thoughts you're like not dealing with that right now we're we're cutting in we're putting in the we're putting in a floor we're doing this or that or the other thing and you're you're absolutely right about the quality of work increasing um i'm just kind of reflecting back everything that you said here um <clears throat> excuse me the the thing that's most important i think in terms of adapting to single-mindedness is you're basically 
Uh, you ever seen? You've seen Star Wars, right? <laughs> have I seen Star Wars? Yes, I have. Okay, so you remember the the way the the Death Star lights up when it fires the when it fires the cannon? It has the it has the like the five or six mini cannons that that po- focus mm. into. I wish we could actually show it without breaking a copyright. I know, but it all goes with <laughs> a single thing, and then. That's ideally what you're wanting to do on a daily basis because that will create your momentum and more or less make you unstoppable. Now, yeah, you have to cycle it through recreation so that way you can you can keep going. Um, but beyond that, you beyond that, that's it. That's the main thing that's needed because I see so many times, even with some of the people that I work with, um, they'll be on a project that I'm on. Or they'll be working with me, and then they'll off. Oh, I'm off doing side work, and then it's like, what are you even doing here, man? So, that's that's what I've got to say about about that. You want to you want to be be like the Death Star laser, but don't take out Alderaan. Yeah, <laughs> the there's a there's a functionality here that's at stake here. So let me let's actually talk about it physically first. So if if you're a chef, you know the term mise en place, which just means everything in its place, right? Right. And so. If I'm cooking, I just want to set up everything where it needs to be at first, you mm-hmm. know, I, and, and and basically if I don't do that, then I'm going to have to spend time running around going in between things. Now, especially if you're a man, if you're a hot prep cook, again, restaurant management is my background, so maybe I, I make too many cooking analogies, but it really works with this one, that if, if you are a hot prep person, you're making gravy, you're making uh, sautéed mushrooms, onions, uh, mashed potatoes, all at the same time. And all those have different timers and things going on. And unfortunately, you don't really have the opportunity to to only do the gravy right now and then finish. Right. right? It, these things have to happen all at once. But if everything's in its place, you got it all timed out, you can manage it because it's all right in front of you. If you don't, then you have to leave and go and do other things and then come back and then your timers are just going to fall further and further behind and you're not going to be on time because everything right. wasn't set up. Now, let's relate that. Maybe you're like, well, I don't cook. I, that doesn't apply to me. Okay, let's talk about that. In Although you should cook. No, you should. It's fine. Come on. Uh, cooking with Dale and Hody. That's the next show after after things settle down, right? What's cooking? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got... And so in your brain... It does the same thing neurologically. Now, you may just say, yeah, my synapses, you go from one end to the other, and synapses fire really quickly, right? I'm not even, I'm not debating that. Maybe yours do. <laughs> when I've had a few, a little bit of caffeine, yeah. But what we're saying is they can fire quickly, and you can go back and forth. But the, but you get, you cut down on the amount of distractions and the amount of pathing that your brain has to do if you have if you're focused, right? If you focus on that single area in your brain and mm-hmm. said right now I am writing a term paper about Abraham Lincoln and I am just going to focus on that. As soon as you check your cell phone, what do your synapses do? You go over here, right? Yep. And then you try to say, "Well, I'm just interrupting it. I'm going to check my cell phone, I'm going to check a text and then I'm going to go back to the Abraham Lincoln." Well, the more you're doing this, the more energy is lost, right? We know the the yeah. entire mind works on energy, right? So you're wasting energy when you're not being single-minded because even if you're just still sitting in the same chair and you say, I went from thinking about Lincoln to thinking about a text to thinking about Lincoln again, you've lost energy. And what's going to happen is you're going to do, you're going to provide a product that's using less and less and less energy because it borrowed from something else, you know, and you wasted time visiting another place in your brain before going back to the other one. And, and that's how I kind of, that's the physical and the neurological element that I think about when it comes to single-mindedness. I agree. I, I'll just illustrate that with something I was thinking about. If you're going on, if you're driving, and I'm just assuming everyone here drives, um, unless you live in New York, then you probably don't. But anyway, a uh, little sideways energy there. But if you're going, if you're going straight down a straightaway, you can, you can go theoretically as fast as you want. Now, if you're having to take turns, and and do drifts and that sort of thing yeah a, a torino a grand torino drift or a tokyo drift can be cool but you're wasting the you're wasting the energy at that point of your of your car and if you're if you're not careful taking a turn um and going directly towards your goal you could you, you could skid off the road or cause other problems that way that's then that i think that leads into 
what you were saying about the less energy that you put in when you're hopping around between your term paper about uh, Robert E. Lee versus uh, your text messages, um, it can it can become a disaster. You could you could end up with a with a B or a C or God forbid an F. I skipped D, but you know you you want to be able to put out as as high of a quality product. And that's that's a function of your inputs versus your outputs. So yeah. I'll wrap it. I'll, I guess I can wrap it there. That was the only illustration I wanted to give you was the uh, was the Grand Tokyo Torino. I don't even know what that is. Tokyo <laughs> drifting. I heard a term once. Or skidding out. Uh, the dr- the drift. I think you said it yeah. right. Drifting. Yeah. That's right. what it is. You 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 nailed it. I played enough okay. video games. I know what drifting is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the so I guess if we're gonna go to final thoughts, I will start with mine. The I love your analogy about the driving because, like mm-hmm. you said, you might not think, "Oh, I'm I'm just you know even in NASCAR, you just say for the next ten seconds, I'm just going straight." Yep. Why don't you see a driver check their cell phone during that time? Because they're there's... going two hundred. Oh, go ahead. I thought you were asking me. That was rhetorical. Go ahead. It's it's really not. They're going. You know, you could die, right? But at the same time, if you just say, "Well, I'm pretty confident I can hold my hand steady," check my cell phone, put it back down again, right? Here's the thing. There's other things to think about involving that race if you're being single-minded. What you say is, yeah, maybe it's not just maybe he's not going to crash the car if he checks it, if he doesn't check his phone. But what he can do during that 10 seconds, think about where his competitors are in that race. Mm -hmm. He can think about that upcoming turn that's coming and gauge exactly where he wants to hit it and how it wants to be. He can look ahead. Right. And so I think a lot of times when we think, well, I don't need to be single minded because I'm not going to crash. I believe and I probably shouldn't say this, but I believe fervently there are some people who can probably text and drive without killing somebody. But here's the thing. Are you your best driver when you're texting and driving? Maybe you're not going to die, but are you at your best? You know, is a race car driver at his best when he's ripping down that road and says, hey, I'm just going to check a text real quick. Hey, I didn't crash the car. It didn't hurt me at all. <laughs> well, it might hurt you in ways that you don't see. You fall mm-hmm. a little behind. Your commute gets a little longer. You're, the people behind you get irritated, right? I mean, just things that you might not pick up on just because you said, well, I can do it because I didn't crash. Maybe you're the type of person that's getting an A already on these reports. And you say, well, I get distracted. So who cares? I'm getting the grades that I need to get. Well, then think about what you could do without all those distractions. I mean, you're looking at, at a masterpiece, why settle for, you know, an A if you know that an A plus could be out there, you know, right. and, and even if you say, well, I get 100 percent, I already know this, I already do this anyway, then get it done faster, right? Be single minded, and get it done faster. If you already are going to give it your best, then give it your best, hit it, knock it out, get it out of the way and get on with your life, you know? And so I think that that's I, I think for me, when I think single mindedness I can't be multitasking because I'm bad at it. But I think even if you're good at it, you need to you need to dial that back and think about how well you're doing everything all at once. Now, some people are great at multitasking. And sometimes you have no choice. Like I mentioned the hot prep guy or man. Mm-hmm. Uh, props to women that are good at cleaning the house because I'm not. But like the, they'll have like <laughs> some cleaning thing going on in the bathroom at the same t- time they're sweeping something at the same time they're on the cell phone working something out with the babysitter, you know, and they're so good. And sometimes you have to do it all at once, mm-hmm. but live in that moment and cut down on as many distractions as you possibly can, you know, say, yes, I'm going to multitask. But people that are great at multitasking, it's not because they're flexible thinkers. They're actually more organized thinkers. They just are able to organize quicker, right? Mm-hmm. They say, okay, well, I'm going to sweep while this is while this is on the stove, and I know how long it takes me to sweep this floor, and so after I finish sweeping the floor, I'm going to put this in the oven, and then I'm going to clean, clean the bathroom, and then I'm going to wash my hands thoroughly, and at about that time, that's the time for me to take this out of the oven, and, you know, so on there. And so you can say, man, they're good at multitasking. What they're really doing is being good at, at a, at, at they're being single minded towards the purpose of organization. So I don't want to talk smack against the the multitaskers out there because it really is just a form of single mindedness. You're just very good at it in, in ways that I'm not. But yeah, those are my final final thoughts, Dale. 
single mindedness, your final thoughts. Well, just to, this will be brief. Um, it, you're just to play off of what you had said, kind of piggybacking and maybe even repeating it. The, the, the difference between the, um, the hot, the hot prep guy and the person who's trying to write their term paper and check their text messages, it's all going towards one purpose. And that's, that's the making sure all of the hot food is ready, which is a cascading effect of, of a function of the larger kitchen from, I guess, from what I can tell of the rest of the restaurant, making sure everything's ready for the meals and the customers to be, to be pushed out to them. So that way the food can be sold, the money can be gotten, and then the people can be paid and the owner can take profits. Hashtag capitalism. So you're, you're doing all of this. I, I don't know how to do that. I just did it, but <laughs> the, the but that, gang sign hashtag. Yes. The, yeah. The gang sign hashtag. <laughs> so you're, you're going to, you're, you're all pushing all of those items into, into the single purpose rather than what's, what's the texting? What's the point of that? I mean, yeah, you're communicating, but is that really on task with writing your, writing your paper about Edward the sixth um, or any of those other historical figures? So I'll wrap with that. So, um, do you want me to go ahead and do the plugs? Because I'm trying to remember the Patreon page, but you'll have to help me through it again. No, I can. I got you on the plugs. Guys, WeirdLibertarians.com, Patreon.com slash WeirdLibertarians if you want to help help us out. I appreciate it. We, we are going to lose Dale for a hot minute. He's uh, he's starting his own business. Uh, let's talk restarting about that. Restarting it. Restarting. I have to emphasize. Restarting? I've, restarting. I've always had the business. I've just It's just actively grabbing clients now, so it's not that big of a... It's not that big of a shift. It's just gotcha. you know. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk about in the next one since next one's technically your last episode. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, support us so that we can uh, pay people like Dale so that he never has another job. Do another job again. <laughs> but yeah, again, thanks for your viewership, guys, and keep on fueling the fires of liberty.